An implication is something that is just as true as something that is stated explicitly, but you have to reason to it. You're about to spout illogical bullcrap. What do you think that implies? Let's do this. Round one, fight! Delusion! Logic boo! Logic boo! You win! Greetings fellow space travelers, Bionic Dance here. Today we've got a video from World Video Bible School, of whom I've never heard. They're gonna start with a reasonable premise, and then balloon animal it into some quite illogical conclusions based on false premises. Observe. For instance, when Socrates stated, all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, what's the implication? Well, therefore, Socrates is mortal. The Pythagorean Theorem, it gives us something similar to that. It says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared on a right triangle. Now, if you have a squared being the one side of the triangle 3, and then the other side of the triangle being 4, then what is the hypotenuse? Well, it's not written out for you, but it shows us that 5 is the answer there. It's not stated explicitly, but it's implied. Like I said, so far so good. But just wait, he'll go off the rails and into the rabbit hole soon enough. Now something that's implied is just as true as something that is explicit. I've gone looking and I don't see anywhere that explicitly says World Video Bible School advocates for creationism. But they do have a course on Genesis, so it's... Wait for it implied. But that only illustrates my objection to their position. I might be wrong. Something implied isn't necessarily something that's true now, is it? They could be teaching Genesis as allegory. All I know is that they have a course on that particular bit of the Bible. Implication is not fact. So what does that have to do with atheism and free will? Simply this, that if there is no God, there is an implication involved in that statement, and that implication is that free will cannot exist. That's not implied at all. What is implied is that free will as described by religion can't exist. But funny thing, there are so many other ways free will could come about without a god. Oh, I'm not saying I believe in any of them. I don't for a moment suspect that the supernatural exists. But godless magic is definitely one possible way free will could have come about instead. This guy needs to step out of his religious bubble. It's not doing his thinking any favors. The famed atheist and New York Times best-selling author Sam Harris wrote in his book Free Will, and I quote, Free will is an illusion. Our wills are simply not of our own making. He further stated, I cannot determine my wants. My mental life is given to me by the cosmos. Look, I've got my issues with Sam Harris. I find some of his political positions quite horrible. But his statement here is correct, even if I would replace the cosmos with my brain. He's not wrong, but I think that some of the more chowdery chowder heads won't quite grok his phrasing. Now, why is the lack of free will implied in the idea of godlessness or atheism? Now, here's why. Because atheism is founded on the belief system of materialism. And again, dude boy here needs to step out of his religious bubble because he swallowed the theistic view of atheism Kool-Aid, the idea that atheism is a worldview. Materialism is not inherent to atheism. Nothing is inherent to atheism other than having no God belief. See those people over there who believe in a God? I'm not one of them. That's it. That's atheism. If you're hanging signs around people's necks to show what religion they believe in, atheists would be the ones who go unadorned. That's it. Atheists who aren't materialists are rare, but nothing about atheism necessitates, requires materialism. If you want to have the discussion about materialism and free will, okay, lock and load, but leave atheism out of it. Even if materialism is implied, that doesn't make it so. Implication is not truth. Materialism is simply the idea that there is nothing super material. That there is no soul, that there is no mind, that there is no personality. That when you are talking about yourself, 
or I am talking about myself, then all we can mean by that is we are talking about the physical properties that compose the bodies that we can touch, see, taste, hear, or smell. The problem is that he mixes in nuggets of truth surrounded by a bullcrap coating. True, I don't believe in a soul, but I do believe in the self. I am what my brain does. Even if the universe is purely material and deterministic, even if free will is an illusion, I experience that illusion. There is nothing about a materialistic universe that precludes self-awareness. And it's all thanks to my head meets. I know this quite intimately due to my bouts with seizures and their subsequent elimination through brain surgery. I could do a whole video on what it's like to have a seizure and some of the absolutely bizarre ways the world seems to change as a result. It's like being on a really strange drug trip. If there is more to the self than the brain, I challenge anybody to show it in a testable, falsifiable manner. And that's why modern atheism is forced to say that when you do something, it's not really you doing it. It's your body forcing upon you whatever it is. And yet, they wouldn't even say it's your body forcing upon you. They would say, ultimately, there's no real you. He says it's not really you, which implies that the only way a you can exist is separate from the body. He says it's your body forcing action upon you, implying that you are some sort of spiritual passenger trapped in a meat machine that's acting without your consent. His interpretations are obviously being filtered through his presupposition of what a self can and must be. In June of 2015, Evolutionary biologist Jerry Coyne delivered a lecture at the Imagine No Religion Convention in Vancouver, Canada. And in that speech, he said, Now many of you don't accept that. You don't believe that you are robots made out of meat, which is what I'm going to try to convince you of today. Now, did you catch that? Dr. Coyne said that to his atheistic audience, you don't believe that you are a meat robot, but the implication of atheism is that you are. And so he said, I'm going to try to convince you of that. Now, wait just a sec. Try to convince you of that. Try to convince who? If those people in his audience cannot make their own decisions, if they cannot choose, if they do not have the free will to decide what to believe, to decide if they're going to stay through the lecture, to decide if they're going to change their minds, then whom, pray tell, is Jerry Coyne trying to convince? Is he trying to somehow alter the matter inside of the brains of each one of his audience so that they will conclude something even though they can't choose to conclude something different? I've heard this kind of argument against determinism before, but usually it's about criminals and having a justice system. If someone didn't have a choice whether to commit a crime, why do we arrest, try, and punish them for it? The implication being that we have the choice to create and enforce laws. However, if the criminal had no choice, neither did those who created ways to deal with crime. And yet, those who argue about the justice system, or in this case, lectures intended to change minds, the implicit assumption seems to be that, despite free will being an illusion, the free will exists to decide it's futile to act in a world with no free will, that making that choice is an exception. That's a disconnect that those arguing against determinism seem unable to see, much less let go. You see, the fact that he is involved in reasoning with his audience belies the conclusion that they have free will to decide what to do. Does it, though? Do you really choose to be convinced of something? You experience being given information with your senses. That experience is processed and interpreted by your brain. Through those processes, the new information is accepted or rejected. If free will is required for any of that, Please show how. What I'm seeing here is really an argument from incredulity fallacy, an appeal to common sense, that because something is so incredible or difficult to imagine, it must be wrong. Why are you watching this video? Believe me, I'm asking myself that very same question. If you are choosing to watch this video, in a very real sense, there has to be a God. I... Ju... Uh, what? <laughs> 
Jerry Coyne went on to say that our behavior is absolutely determined by the laws of physics. And then he added, we are bowls of sugar. Just very complicated bowls of sugar. Well, why in the world would any person want to come to the idea that we don't have free will? Want to? What does what we want have to do with it? I don't want to come to the conclusion that the speed of light is an absolute. It makes interstellar travel kind of a pain in the ass, if not impossible. But that's the reality. And if we discovered that free will doesn't exist, that might just be tough noogies, pal. You can want there to be a god and one that gave you free will all you like, but that's not going to have a damn thing to do with the reality. One of the reasons for that, in fact, I would suggest the primary reason, is to deflect human moral responsibility. Oh, Nelly, are you one of those everybody knows there's a God but they just want to sin types? You see, if you are just atoms banging around in a body, then what you do, well, you can't be held responsible for. It's not your fault that you lied, that you cheated, that you murdered, that you committed adultery with someone else's wife. That can't be chalked up to you because ultimately there is no you. I've already pointed out how it's no more a matter of free will to have a justice system than it is to commit a crime. And I've already pointed out that you are what your brain does. There is a you. It's just not what Sparky here wants it to be. His premises are filtered entirely through his religious presuppositions. He's clearly trying to find a way to make sure that it's divine justice, the go to heaven or hell justice that gets you in the end. That morality is a matter of authority rather than conscience. I don't think that mortal morality, mortal justice, and material causes are possibilities he finds comfortable and so he rejects them, evidence be damned. And that is the difference between him and determinists, the reasoning behind taking one position or the other, testable reality versus emotional preference. Biologist Anthony Cashmore wrote, From this simple analysis, surely it follows that individuals cannot logically be held responsible for their behavior. And he also has that same disconnect, the assumption that a justice system is a matter of free will while other behaviors are not. Is that true? That you don't have a choice? You know, the problem with this line of reasoning is that simply every single one of us recognize that there is an us. We recognize that we are people. What Coyne and Cashmore and Sam Harris and other atheists are admitting is, hey, you're right. If there is no God, then free will cannot exist. Not one of them said that. Not one. Not in the quotes provided. But instead of saying free will does exist, so there must be a God, they then say, okay, free will doesn't exist. And what everyone thinks they're doing when they're making decisions is just an illusion. And they should have concluded that there is free will because... I find it very interesting that Sam Harris, at the end of his book on free will, thanks his wife for proofreading and looking into his material and helping him with that. Why? Why didn't he thank the table that didn't have a choice to sit there as it was holding up his computer? Why didn't he thank the computer that so effectively put the information to a disk and sent it through the internet. Why would he choose to thank his wife? This is a ludicrously stupid question. Why would anyone give thanks to proofreading to someone or something that hadn't performed the task? Dude Boy is obviously trying to be clever, trying to make the act of giving thanks in a deterministic world look ridiculous, and he's just as obviously failing. Really, if you chose to sit here and watch this video, then by all accounts, the atheistic accounts and those from a creationist, God has to exist. And atheism simply cannot be true if you chose to watch this video. I can think of no surer sign that there is no God than that videos like this can exist. Until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please think. But godless magic is definitely one possible way. Again, dude boy here needs to step out of his religious bubble because he's swallowed the theism, theism, no, theistic.
Why would he give his thanks for proofreading? Proof rating. Proof rating. Rating. Even YouTubers need Ferraris. Please donate on Patreon.